In this video, I'm taking a look at rail squares, in particular this rail square and rail square set from Bench Dogs. That's coming up next. And welcome back. If you've got a track saw or a plunge saw, then there'll be a couple of things that'll be on your radar almost from the start. The first one's probably another length of track or rail, in which case be sure to join me next week for my video on guide rail compatibility. And the other is likely to be a rail square. Rail squares have been a bit of a blind spot for main manufacturers and didn't really become a thing until the market opened up around 2009. I bought this one back then because it was the only game in town and it is truly terrible but fast forward a decade or so and the whole rail square market has matured with many squares available now from many different makers and I've been offered most of those for review and I've always refused. The thing is I get most of my material cut to size. I have an MFT here in the workshop and I rarely make the kind of cut on site where a rail square would really be of any help but Ralph over at Bench Dogs sent me over a set anyway and I'm so glad he did because I'm a complete rail square convert. Let's get the lights on and I'll show you what I mean. Now before we start I'd also like to say that viewers of the channel can receive 5% off not just the Bench Dog rail square but absolutely anything across the board at Bench Dogs Co UK by using the offer code 10 minute workshop at checkout. That's 5% off absolutely everything at Bench Dogs Co UK and thanks so much to Ralph at Bench Dogs for that offer. Now the principle behind a rail square is pretty simple. It's usually a finely machined piece of usually aluminium that fits into the T-slot beneath the rib, certainly in the Festool pattern rails, and bears against the outside edge of the rail and locks into place. The aluminium extends to the side of the rail by about 200mm or just over to give a 360mm long face that can bear against the edge of your workpiece holding the rail absolutely square. And it is absolutely square. No ifs or buts or maybes about it. These are well engineered squares and guys that I know are using these with a 3 metre rail, a 10 foot rail and getting results that are as square as a square thing on a square day. I've been using this bench dog square for a few weeks now and before I started one of my concerns was that the weight of the square might make the rail tip over and make it awkward to use or align correctly and the short answer is no it's really pretty well balanced although obviously at over half an inch thick the bench dog square carries some weight and clearly all these cutouts are there at least in part to reduce weight without compromising strength or accuracy. In addition, there's a little brass dingus here that you can pull out and lock in place to rest on the surface of the workpiece, preventing any movement at all if that's something that troubles you. Now, one of the other slight niggles with the overall concept of a rail square is that it does rely on an accessible edge for the square to bear against. So if you wanted to use it against an edge that wasn't perfectly square in profile, say a bevel edge, a round over, or a post form kitchen worktop, then the square may not have a solid point of reference. Well, fortunately, bench dogs have thought of that as well by making what they call bevel adapters, effectively bench dogs that screw into the underside of the square to align perfectly with the face and extend that face down to the flat edge so you can easily make those cuts on profiled workpieces. In addition to the bevel adapters though, you can also fit a pair of MFT dogs into the underside of the square. And this is where it gets really interesting because using those same tapped holes, these MFT dogs are perfectly spaced to fit into the regular 96mm hole pattern of the standard MFT style top, turning your rail square into a removable cross-cut rail that's dead square and crucially requires almost no setup time. The MFT dogs are grooved along their length to correspond to the common thicknesses of materials all the way up to 40mm so you can easily align the dog collars to prevent your rail disappearing every time you move a workpiece. And of course if you're awkward like me and prefer to use say 22mm then they're easy to set to that thickness or any other as well. So let's take a look at the buying options for this bench dog square and accessories. There are three basic kits available. The first and lowest price is the rail square and Allen key in a canvas bag, and that costs £110 including VAT. Next up is that same kit, but in a T-lock sustainer, a cis one with a foam insert to keep everything tidy and in its place, and that comes in at £150, again including VAT. 
And the final option is a fully loaded sustainer with a rail square and allen key, plus a couple of 30mm bench dogs, a pair of 30 and 60mm bevel adapters, and a pair of MFT dogs with dog collars and allen keys for those two. That full set will set you back just a pound short of 200 quid at £199, again including VAT. Now it's got to be said, if you have a look around at the various rail squares available, none of them are exactly what you'd call cheap. And make no mistake, 200 notes for the fully loaded kit is a hefty chunk of change for anyone. But 110 for the entry point is really very competitive, and considering what you get for the additional £89, the fully loaded sustainer isn't at all bad either. On a purely personal note, I would quite like to see an option for the full kit and the foam insert, but without this sustainer, because if you're anything like me, you've already got a fair few of those SIS1 sustainers knocking around, and I don't really want to add another one to the collection. I'd rather use the one I have, but maybe that's just me. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm way off base on this. Now the Bench Dogs Rail Square is designed to be compatible with Festool, Mikita and Triton rails. There will be a version available before too long for Maffel and Bosch rails. And I'll keep you posted on that one as any further information becomes available. If you're not already following me or Bench Dogs on Instagram, perhaps now would be a good time to start. I don't have Triton rails here, but I do have Festool and Mikita rails. And the square fits both of those absolutely perfectly. I've also tried this square with rails that I have here from the Titan track saw and the little Parkside track saw, the Aldi work zone and rails from Evolution. And this is where the guide rail compatibility becomes a bit of an issue because none of these companies are matching the standard Festool rail pattern exactly. Let's start with a little Parkside rail. The bench dog square will fit, but the rails themselves are too narrow for the outer edge to bear against the rebate on the rail square. So if you did want to use the Parkside rail, you'd have to square it up manually. And I would recommend squaring up manually all the non-standard rails or rails that aren't officially supported. Next is Aldi's work zone rail, and it's probably no surprise that this is a total non-starter because of the oddball width of the rail. I mentioned this in the Traxor Workshop series, and I'll have more on that in next week's rail compatibility video. It's probably safe to assume as well that Shepak rails will have the same issue, though that is only an assumption on my part as I don't have any Shepak branded rails here, so treat that as a general for what it's worth warning, and please do your own research before spending any money. Moving on to the Titan rails, these do fit and they do bear against the rebate reasonably well, but the rail material around the T-slot is thin, so the rail won't actually tighten unless you fit a couple of small washers under the locking nuts. Again, I would recommend checking squareness manually on this rail. And finally, and a little unfortunately, the Evolution rails don't appear to want to play nicely either, as the T-slot seems to be a little too small for the brass insert to slide in. I've sent a section of Evolution rail to Ralph at Bench Dogs, so he can take a closer look and see if there's anything can, he can do to make it more compatible with the Evolution rails, as I know a number of you guys have picked up the Evolution rails as a bundle at a great price, and it would be a great shame not to be able to use something like the Bench Dogs Square on those rails. Again, I'll keep you posted on any developments with that one. I can't emphasize enough though that the Bench Dog Square works perfectly out of the box with the rails that it's designed to be compatible with, i.e. Festool and Mikita. Let's wrap this up with some final thoughts. What does this full kit mean in practice? Well, it means that it can work on lots of different levels. With the basic square, you can make cuts that are easy and accurate with almost nothing else required. And the square has notches cut out of it to enable clamping as well if you're using it in an unusual situation, for example, as I did recently when I was using it vertically. If you throw a basic MFT or MFT style top into the mix together with a couple of bench dogs and the MFT dogs, then suddenly you can make accurate and repeatable cuts all day long. Add a fence on some fence dogs and a flag stop and you can replicate the most used functions of an MFT bench for a fraction of the price. 
and critically have it break down to a few easily movable components, not just for transport on site or for installs, but for storage as well. So if you're tight on space, this could be a very effective solution for a cutting bench or cutting station, something you may need only infrequently, but also want to be accurate when you do need it. Some time ago I talked about making a replacement for my portable bench and I'll be doing that using these components before too long, so keep your eyes peeled for that particular project. And finally, and on a purely personal level, I think I'd quite like to see a kit that included a pair of fence dogs and a flagstaff, as that would almost certainly be a complete MFT in a box. I think that would be a pretty compelling bundle. Maybe I'm talking nonsense. Let me know in the comments if you think that's the case or if you think that that's something you'd like to see. Anyhow, that's been my initial impressions of the Bench Dogs Rail Square and Rail Square accessories. I'll come back to this and keep you posted after I've used it for a little bit longer, but don't forget that offer code of 10 minute workshop for 5% off everything at Bench Dogs Co. UK. I'm going to leave you with a little extract of a Patreon special where I run my Patreon credits, where I upcycled some old school bench tops into a tabletop for a neighbour, and you can come and join the Patreon party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop. But that's it for this week. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time. So my neighbour at home here has been busy on eBay and picked up a couple of old, I think they were lab benches uh, from a school. They're teak and he wants me to turn them into a tabletop. Now this one is in pretty decent shape. Uh, a few sort of oddities about it. I've already trimmed one edge of that off, but the other one is particularly poor. It's got a huge split down it and there's no way I'm going to be able to repair that. So we're going to have a slightly offset join in this. This side's going to be about 600, the other's going to be a little over 300 to make a 900 wide by two and a half meter uh, tabletop. It's always a bit of a challenge moving larger boards around a workshop this size, but it's especially so when I'm trying hard not to make that split in the smaller board any worse. As I have the luxury of several plunge tools, I keep one with a 28 tooth or universal blade, which is better for ripping solid timbers. And it doesn't do a bad job on crosscuts either, to be honest, but I do prefer the standard 48 tooth for that. 